Hello and welcome to the Handling Date and Time with our course. We at R Squared Academy are really excited about this course and we hope you are too. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda for this course. In the first module, we'll start off simple by looking at how to get the current date and time. And we'll also get a quick overview of the case study that we'll be using throughout this course. In the second module, we'll understand date and time classes in R. That is how does R store date time. So we'll look at uh, three different classes and we'll also understand how R internally stores uh, date and time. From there, we'll look at date arithmetic. That is how you can add and subtract uh, dates, how you can update or change uh, different components of your date or time. And then in the fourth module, we'll spend a little bit of time understanding time zones and daylight savings right uh, when you're doing data analysis it is very important to keep in mind the time zone from which the data comes and also whether daylight savings is in effect and in the next two modules we'll learn how to format and pass date or time right so we look at all the weird uh, formats in which date and time come in the real world and how we can as such date time using conversion specifications and after this module we'll also learn how to read data sets which include date or time column in them from there we'll learn how to extract different date time components such as the year month day or the hour minute and second right and we look at a lot of variations to get different information from a date or time object after that, we learn how to create, update, and verify date time objects, right? So here, when we say create and update, we are going to create date or time using the different components, which we learned in the previous module. And then we learn how to update those different components, as well as verify if a data or object belongs to a date or time class. After that, we'll spend time understanding intervals, duration, and period. And we'll end by learning how to round and roll back dates now uh, the prerequisites for this course are you should have basic knowledge of r and r studio that is you should know how to use them uh, you should have a laptop or desktop with a working internet connection and you should also have a bit of knowledge about uh, basic data manipulation right so whenever we use these uh, different data manipulation techniques uh, we will refer you to uh, our courses which uh, cover these topics so you can quickly take a detour, uh, learn those concepts and continue your learning journey. Now in the learning management system, um, you have access to all the videos, the slides in both PDF and PPT formats. You have access to all the R script, uh, the ones uh, used in the examples and also the solutions to the practice questions uh, the data sets that we use in this course are also available along with suggested readings now if you need any help you can use the discussion forum and you can ask questions there or you can email us at support at rsquaredacademy.com you can also reach out to us on our phone number as well as raise a ticket using the given link and if you're not coming through the learning management system, you can still access all the resources such as the slide, code and data and the link to the blog post. All of them are there in the uh, GitHub repository. So that is also mentioned wherever necessary. And we also created a RStudio cloud project so that you can quickly take a look at the examples as well as all the data sets and R script right and there's also a blog post right so you can go through that blog post as well and there is also a, a chapter in an ebook so we'll add that link as well that is about the resources for this course now good luck as you get started and we look forward to seeing you in the discussion forums now in the first module uh, we'll keep things simple and learn how to get the current date and time and how to check whether the time is in AM or PM. And since 2020 is a leap year, we'll also learn how to check whether a given year or a particular year is a leap year, right? So we'll look at functions from both uh, base R and the lubricate package. 
uh, as and when I use the functions from the lubricate package, I'll call them out so that you know which function uh, comes from where, whether it's from base R or it's from a different package. Right, so let's get started. First we'll load the uh, packages that we'll use. Okay, so we have loaded the lubricate package. Now the first thing that we'll do is we'll learn how to get the current date. And so you can use two functions here. The first one is sys.date, which comes from base R. Right? So you can see the current date, which is uh, 11th April 2020. Right? So we will first show you the year followed by the month followed by the date. You can get the same output using the today function from the lubricate package. Right? You can see the same output. Now, if you want to see the time, then you have to diff use a different set of functions, right? Get current time. So we'll use sys dot time. This is from base R, right? So here, along with the date component, you can see the time as well as the time zone. So we are based out of India. So you can see the time zone is IST, which is Indian Standard Time. And now the time is around 12.45 in the noon. I can get the same output using the now function from the lubricate package, right? It's the same output. Now, if you look at the output here, you can see that the date component comes first, followed by the time component, and then in the last, you can see the time zone, right? Uh, the reason I'm calling this out is because this is the ISO standard for specifying or representing date and time. And in R, this is the standard that is followed. We'll talk about more. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about the ISO standard in the second module when we look at how R stores date and time. But for the time being, since uh, we are looking at this output, I thought I should bring it to your attention. Great. So now we know how to get the current date and time. Another thing we would want to check is whether the time is in AM or PM, right? So we can do that with. Uh, couple of functions so here we are check whether time occurs in am or pm right so the two functions first one is am so this will return true if the time is in am else it will return false so it is returning a logical value it doesn't return a date or time or anything it will tell you whether the time uh, is in am or pm now for that we have to uh, give it some input right we have to give it the time so let us use this dot time function here right and the output is false right because it is uh, afternoon here so now if i use the pm function we should be able to see true right so these two functions will return logical values uh, they will return true if either it is uh, AM or PM, else they will return false. But you have to give them some input uh, such as the uh, sister time function or the now function so that they can extract the time from that and then uh, return the output. Good. Now we will go to the last function which is check whether a year is a leap year. For this, we'll use the leap underscore year function. Again, this is from the lubricate package. Now here also we have to give it some input, right? Otherwise, how will, how will it know uh, which year it is dealing with? Now one way to do that is just specify the year like this, right? So I'm just specifying it like a number, 2020, without any uh, quotes or anything else, right? And it returns true because uh, uh, 2020 is a leap year. Now, another way you can give the input is use this dot date or the today function, right? Uh, any function that returns the date component can be used and leap underscore uh, year will extract the year from that and then it will return true or false depending on whether that particular year is a leap year or 
not, right? So these are some basic functions um, that we just wanted to go through uh, before we uh, move on to the more intermediate and advanced topics because we'll use some of these functions in the next module, right? And it's also a good way to understand how to get the current date and time and in what way these are represented in R, right? So now we'll go to a few practice questions that you have for you. So first is get the current date right so this depends on when you are taking this course and then get the current time so whether you are learning in the morning or in the evening and then check whether the time is in am or pm right so probably you'll figure out whether you're a morning person or an evening person and finally uh, check whether the following years are leap years or not so those are 2018 and 2016. Right? pretty simple you'll just be using the same set of functions that we looked at uh, but it's, it's just that uh, you go through them and get a hold on these things. Now, all these uh, practice questions are there in the learning management system. Uh, there's a PDF file in each of those modules. So you can read through those questions. And then we are given the solutions in an R strip, right? So first you try to answer them and then compare your answers with the solutions we have provided. Now, before we go to the next module on how R handles date and time, we'll just get a quick overview of the case study, right? So uh, we have a simple small data set uh, of imaginary trading company, right? So there are three columns, invoice, due, and payment. So this is like the company generates invoices. Then there's a due date before which the payment has to be made for this invoice. And then there's the actual payment date when the client actually makes the payment against this invoice. So there are only three columns, invoice, due, and payment, and all of them have uh, dates in them, right? Uh, now, when you read this data in, uh, the way we have uh, structured it is that R will recognize it as date, and it will be stored as date once you read that in. But in most other cases, uh, that is not how things will work out, right? You'll have to specify whether that particular column is uh, date or time object right and for that you need to understand the different formats in which date and time come now that is something that we will cover in the fifth or sixth module right so when we come there what we'll do is we'll look at two other data sets that we have and we'll read them in while we are specifying their date or time formats right so we'll also look at the code that's we'll type in the code where we are specifying the date or time and we'll also use the RStudio IDE to read in one of the data sets so that way you know both the ways to read the data in and to specify the date and time formats but for the time being till you reach that module uh, you can just read this data set in we are given the script to read this data set in you can read it in and start using in the uh, examples in this course but once we reach that module we'll cover how to specify the daytime formats right so in this case study we'll answer a few questions like extract the date month and year from the due date uh, compute the number of days to settle invoice compute days overdue uh, in cases where the payment has been delayed against the invoice uh, check if the due year is a leap year and a bunch of other questions right now these these questions are spread out through all the different modules right so as and when we have covered the concepts required to answer them we'll take this and we'll start uh, answering these questions right so this these questions will pretty much be covered all the way till the ninth module okay so uh, this is a case study and the underlying data set it is also there in the learning management system uh, the questions of the case study are also there in the PDF file along with the solutions as well, right? So now that we have a good idea about the case study and we have a good idea about how to get the date and time in R, we'll move on to the second module where we look at the different date and time classes that will allow us to store date and time in R. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos on our playlist, and subscribe to R Squared Academy channel to learn more. Happy learning!